morning. Beautiful Saturday here in northeast Louisiana. Uh, it was 55 this morning. We had a coop front cut through yesterday. And it's feeling really nice. So I've got the door open in my shop. I had some uh, working on the working on the Zenith uh, little, little uh, G503Y uh, model number uh, 5G41's chassis number, little portable Zenith, uh, which is on my workbench now. Uh, let's see, zoom in a little bit here. Uh, this thing is, uh, I hadn't made a video of this thing. This is it. I call this the money pit radio. I hadn't made no videos of it, um, which is unfortunate because I had, uh, which is unfortunate because I had a lot. This radio involved quite a bit of work. Um, The whole thing was bad. I mean, everything about this radio. Just the front, front was just completely plastic was so deteriorated that it was brittle. I tried to get it apart, and it just disintegrated. Uh, this side here, even though it was not perfect, it was so stained and just didn't, I don't know. It looked like something had gotten on it. I'm not sure, but all this plastic was just really bad. So I just scuffed it all down. Fixed the cracks in it with epoxy and repainted it. Um, I used plexiglass to fix the dial on it. Um, repainted the grill, re cleaned up the, the brass a little bit, recovered the outside of the case here. Oh, need that. And uh, my first job I ever done, Tolex. It's got some runs in it. Uh, I use contacts in it on it, which I don't know if you're supposed to do or not. But hey, I learned a lot. It's all about this, you know. You do this hobby, restoring radios and stuff like that. I restore all kinds of electronics, test equipment, you know, scopes, multimeters, whatever. I report. I re I restore that along with radios. Here lately I'm on this kick about older stuff and I've got an Atwater Kent which is on one of my other videos. But anyway, um, this morning I bought a new line cord right here put on this radio. But the other line cord, the old line cord which is all rotted, had this. You can see it. This is called a snap fit or snap it. I think it's snap. Snap it. Anyway, the line cord goes into it and this goes over and it pushes the line cord into the little. I don't think you can see them. There's some, there are some connections in there. You might be able to see them little barbs in there. Anyway, it pushes down through the cord insulation into these barbs. And that's the connection. Now this here is a non-polarized plug. Okay? And the reason I want to use this because it's going to take a little camera work, so I'm going to move you. I apologize for the shakiness. Let's move you down a little bit. I'm going to do a little fancy zoom in here. Anyway, I'll use this as a pointer. Right here, there's two little slots right here. And that slot is designed for this plug. So when you take this plug, plug it into this slot,
when you take this plug and plug it into that slot, what that does is activates the AC-DC switch. There's a uh, one, two, three pole double throw switch in here, a little slide switch. And that does, when you plug this in, it turns the this thing into a DC operated set. Um, and I fully intend, when I get this radio working, and I found out by this morning that my parts my tubes would be in today. So we'll see how that works. Anyway, um there's not much to this video. But I'm gonna take this plug, which is a brand new plug, and just to keep the thinnessy down, I say that right, thinnessy. I'm going to Want to cut this plug off? We'll cut it off just long enough in case I want to. Never throw this stuff away, guys. We'll take this plug and we'll push it in here like that, and then I'm going to slide that cover on. However, trying to get the old stuff out. This is Bakelite, which means it's fragile. Is the water. I broke that, but I found the piece, and I'm an epoxy freak. I love to use epoxy, so I'm going to epoxy this, let it set up good, and when it gets all set up good, cured, and all this kind of stuff, I'm going to go back in, and uh, I'm going to glue this in there, let it cure, and all that, and then I'll put this thing back together, and this thing, this plug, will be back with its. be back with the radio it was born with. I don't know if it's original. I think it is. I don't know. But hey, it's going to be back. So, anyway, I've tried to keep this radio as original as possible. And uh, I might give a tour of it in here a little bit. And I probably will. I'm going to have to take it back apart anyway. Uh, some people might won't be interested in what I did. Anyway, it's too bad that I didn't do a restoration video on this radio because this radio came right when I bought it it was bad I don't really have any pictures of it which is unfortunate um, but the covering was just Tolex what I call Tolex T-O-L-E-X it was bad let me show you I'm not done with this radio I still got some cosmetic stuff to do. This was the back. As you can see, it was pretty ratty. But here's a here's a hint. Now, like I said, this was my first Tolex, but I do have a little common sense. When you take this stuff off a of radio, if you intend to do Tolex. Do not just rip this crap off. Do not rip this stuff off. Take this stuff off as carefully as you can because you'll need this as a pattern to make your new Tolex or to cut your new Tolex. Do not throw this away. I'm going to throw it away now. I'm done. But you got to keep this stuff. So see, this here was this part. Okay? And this ring right here, this little brass ring, that was fun. I'm saying this would have made a terrific video. Okay, here is the front of the radio. This being the bottom and then the front. See how bad it was? This is the back size of the back cover. It had some a uh, little bit of uh, cushion in there. I didn't put it in there. I didn't see the point. I could have, but there was no point. Here's the other side of the back cover, and then here's the side covers of the cabinet itself. See, it had that 
had that foam, that insulin uh, cushion in there too. I didn't do that. I didn't even get up yesterday morning. I did this yesterday, this, this cover. Now the wood had a lot of problems. Wood had a lot of problems. Um, it'd been damaged. It like it'd been dropped, kicked, or somebody. I don't know. It was pretty rough. I went in, redone the woodwork, re-glued it all, straightened it up. Um, you know, last week and then yesterday morning, I got up not even thinking I was going to do this covering, and I just got a wild hair up. I mean, you know what? And um, started putting all this tolax on, uh, and it turned out great for my first time. I've got a uh, Hickok 600A tube tester uh, that it has Tolex on it and I saw where somebody had redone theirs and it looked great. So I think I'm brave enough now to where I'm going to restore the cover and case on that tube tester. Anyway, that's that. Uh, I'm going to fix this right here and get the epoxy out. I'm going to fix this, let it cure. Then I'm going to uh, put the line cord on here and hopefully my tubes will be in here for too long and I can see how well this radio works with good tubes. But all the tubes in this set was bad. But anyway, I'm going to epoxy that. I won't bore you with that. Uh, and I think later on, the, uh, if I get done with all that, what I may do is uh, I'll take this radio back apart show you the things that I changed in it, um, the problems that I run into and stuff like that. And, um, and I'll explain how I repaired them and all this kind of stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be mildly entertaining. I, I'm hoping to make my channel entertaining. Uh, I would like you guys to help me out and do some likes on it. You know, some share. You know, I I, I, I need I need uh, I need to branch out. Um, but uh, matter of fact, I'm thinking about making a new channel just for this I don't know what to call it I actually have a business name it's called Sam's Radio TV right I'm sorry too much coffee this morning Sam's Radio and TV and Electronics or what I just call Sam's Radio and TV service uh, I always wanted my own TV service and never got to it I, you know, this is many years ago uh, but I could call it what I want to, and I'm, I'm working on getting a sign built for the front of my shop because uh, I'm very nostalgic. Uh, anyway, uh, I tend to banter a lot. So I'm going to shut you loose, cut you loose for a little bit, and I'm going to do some of this epoxy, that uh, plug, and then I'll clean up everything, uh, straighten up my shop, and then we'll pull the radio, get it out of the case, and then we'll go from there. See you in a bit. Okay, guys. The uh, short little video here. At least I think it's going to be short. Uh, the little Zenith portable, made 1950. Uh, it's a little uh, model number G603Y. Uh, it's got a serial number of J-509913. Uh... I do know it was made in 1950, so the serial number starts uh, has a J-50, so I assume that's probably the year it was made now. Uh, if anybody knows how to break down these serial numbers, uh, feel free to add. Uh, anyway, this goes in the case. I haven't put it in there yet because I'm not through with the case. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go rogue with this camera, so give me just a second. Apologize that I'm leaning over. Got to find the release. Go flip my viewfinder so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go handheld on this right here. Make sure we're wide. Okay, here's the radio. Zena portable. Very nice looking little dude, the chassis number is wrote right here, let's see here, there's the chassis. Fifty-two 
5G 41Y. That's 5 Golf 401 Yankee. For all you ham radio enthusiasts. Um, this front right here was so nasty. Now it's got a paint job on it, but and but it was so nasty, and I sanded the heck out of it. But it's still still rough. Right here, you can still see a little outline. I, that has been epoxy because it was split from here all the way down. Uh, I left it a little bit on there. This is never going to be a show radio, okay? I intend if I get this thing working and reliably, I'm basically going to use it for my personal use. Anyway, I re uh, I scuffed all this down, got cleaned up best I could, painted it uh, a gloss black, and then went back in with some testers model car paint, um, testers white enamel, and just used a tiny tiny brush and wrote in there, and then came back. Uh, of course, I had a little smear. When you when you do this, you use a little bit of brush, and you paint inside there, and then you take a, a paper towel or something and just wipe it. And it, you do that for every one of them. But when it did, it leaves a little bit of residue. But I just took a little bit of um, of uh, acetone, just a tiny bit on my on a towel, and I wiped that clean, and it worked perfect. Believe it or not, that's the first time I've actually tried that. Yeah, it's got some imperfections in it, but you know what? Considering what it looks like, this thing looks brand new. The front bezel. Was this? Let me get it over here. On some kind of a background, you can see it. This was the front bezel. It it honestly looks like it had something spilt on. I've never seen one do that just just for rot. If you could just feel the texture, it's like something got a hold of it. that or it's deteriorating. But anyway, that was totally unusable. Matter of fact, somebody had had it apart and glued it back together, and that glue was horrific. Anyway, basically what I did, you'll notice it has a front on it. You'll notice that it is flush with the front cover. That is a piece of 8th inch thick plexiglass that I took and cut using, using this as a form. I used that to give a rough shape to this. I cut it on a bandsaw. I actually have a little bandsaw fan on the side of the road. And uh, hang on a second here. Just a second. Let me find. Let's see if I can do this one handed. You take this off right here. This little badge right here come in extremely useful in this little project. Anyway, do this not tearing it up. There. That's it, if you can see it. I drilled a hole, two holes for these two guys, and then another hole right here for this center rod right here. That's all I did, and then I just kept putting it on here and used a, uh, I used a, uh, a uh, piece of sandpaper. And I kept smoothing it out, smoothing it out until I got a snug fit. Uh, I really need to put this badge back on. I'm not through inside here. When I get through, I'm going to take, I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to take, I'm thinking about going to the auto parts house and getting the the black um, a black sealant I think you use it for windshields 
but it's black and it's flexible and it's really stiff if you want to call it that and I'm going to use that to put a bead around just a little bead around the sides here and I need it to dry I don't need it to be sticky so um, that way if I ever need to take it off it won't be like it's epoxy or something like that that I can't get it off I can peel it off but it'll give a nice little weather seal and I'm hoping if I can blend it in good and all this kind of stuff that it'll work anyway that's that on this display now the other problem that I had is right here all this was cracked off all this this plastic is really brittle by the way in case y'all didn't know uh, this is the uh, on off switch when you open the lid this little switch right here is spring loaded and it does two things this is the shaft if you can see it it does two things when it, when you push the release button on the front on the front of the uh, case is the latch when you pull that latch down this button is supposed to have enough spring tension on it to pop that open to where you can grab it and you just pull up and then this little piece right here is what keeps it in the open position all this stuff uh, was broke so basically I had I didn't have any spare parts couldn't pick up a phone call Zena to get one I just took a piece of metal cut it at a nail glued it in this little slot right here so it's not perfect it has its shortcomings but it works when you close it it pushes the switch in which turns it off then when you push the button there you have to I have to put my finger on top of it just to force it out and then I can open it which is fine uh, if I know how to do it but I'm going to try to fit, come up with a way to put a spring I really hadn't figured out a way I may just do it manually I, I don't know that's I'm just trying to get it working now but anyway this is that's that this is the case we'll get it out of harm's way so anyway let's uh let's move on this is the this is the uh this is the bat this is what i replaced in this radio we'll start over here this is the uh, output transformer right here a very small transformer yeah I could have got a Hammond or something like that replacement but them things have been way bigger than this this radio only puts out I think maybe a watt and a half maximum so basically I could not find I think the secondary I think the primary resist impedance of this is 10,000 ohms I think the 3v4 calls for a 10,000 ohm uh, impedance on the primary into I think eight ohms so I found a 7,000 ohm impedance transformer uh, in the eight ohms it was made for Philco I found it off eBay uh, it ain't perfect but it works okay and then the tubes 3v4 the filaments are open on that I think I did that then a uh, 1U4, I say R, a RF amplifier, I think, IF2. Memory serves me right. This one here is a Duma Flitchy tube. I don't not remember what this is. Oh, this is this 1L6. This is the Achilles heel of this radio. This 1L6 was made strictly for these Zenith type radios, the Oceanic which is a cousin or bigger brother to this and to these type radios the 1L6 uh, is the uh, is the oscillator tube those things are hard to find when you find them they're fifty dollars or more uh, I found a solid state replacement which I seem to understand that they uh, they work quite well if not better I've ordered one it will be here Monday Alright, so here we go. Another 1U4 and a 1S5.
don't remember what I think one of these is the detector I just ordered a whole new set I already ordered the three Victor four uh, it's I've had it a while it's in its place right now anyway most of my tubes will be in today all right next thing I replaced all the capacitors all the tubular capacitors all these green ones here check good couldn't believe it the Cornell Dubule as some people call it they're still good but I change them all so I'm gonna go in there and change them and we'll change them so that's what one two three four five six seven tubular caps we'll get to the filter cap in a minute all right then here's these uh, roundies as they call them so I had one two uh three four five six bad roundies uh dog bone which is a thousand ohm resistor you do these by what is it bed body in anyway this is a thousand ohm so a thousand ohm eia color code is is uh what one zero and then a re uh, I'm sorry, yeah one zero and two more zeros in this case if you look carefully you see a little indention of something there like ink disregard the black I think the black is a tolerance I'm not sure 100% it could be that right there I don't know anyway just looking at this resistor you can see the brown you can see that little black band that's painted on there in red so you've got uh, the brown is the first significant digit so that would be uh, one brown is one black is zero and then red means two so that's one zero and two more zeros, one thousand, and that's kind of how you do it. Just like all these other resistors here, um, I had a two watt resistor here, which looks like a forty seven ohm, I believe. And it's supposed to be one hundred and thirty, but uh, this was in the you come out of the rectifier into this resistor into the uh, capacitors, the power supply capacitors. Uh, I don't even remember what that was for. But anyway, change the resistors. So and then the next thing was this filter cap right here, the electrolytic filter cap. Um, let me show you. Underside of the radio. Where is my favorite pointer at? Let's see. Bear with me, guys. Get my favorite pointer out. This is the filter cap right here. If you just looked at it and you're like, huh. This, that is the original filter cap minus the guts I actually took this capacitor out as you saw just a second ago it had uh, surrounded in cardboard black cardboard I was able to take this capacitor out get that cardboard pulled out of the way and which left the can the aluminum uh, electrolytic can in there I was able to I was able to cut the can about a quarter inch from the base of it and pull all the guts out now basically and uh, I used this cardboard wrap to my advantage so I put new capacitors inside it so what's so-called stuffing and then I just put this cover back over it of course I've damaged this disc right here when I was trying to get it out so I just used some uh, what is it number 10 craft paper black craft paper and uh, just cut a circle I put two of them together glued them together and then just stuck it in there and then round it all up back off and when I got done with it it's had some scratches and stuff like that so I just painted it flat black and put it all back together and it worked it looks great so anyway getting back to the parts then I've got the case the cabinet covers right here is the bottom hinges pretty bad like kind of a fleur de lis they're pretty bad I can't reuse them one of these this in here is pretty bad off but here's where I'm having trouble finding this is the bottom feet this used to be I think this used to be chrome not 100% sure but you see how it was put on it's kind of a but I'm having trouble finding these uh, if anybody knows where I can find these I think they're about a half inch in diameter or maybe a little bigger and they're probably about a half inch deep maybe three-eighths to a half inch deep if anybody knows where I can get some of these let me know um, 
And then finally the case, how the back opens and closes from the top. This is the uh, this is what holds it together. These two clips and these two little rigs right here. Anyway, that's what I replaced on that. And the Tolex too. Anyway, getting back to the radio. Get that out of the way. Let's see here. Uh, this is a little tuning shaft right here. It goes in here. Really nothing special about it. It's got two dial cords. This dial cord here goes into these two eilers, which these eilers, if you'll see, see that? They're going to need attention. They're not supposed to be that loose. I've already had them come off track one. So, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I think there was a piece of plastic in there maybe behind it that supported it. I don't know. I'm going to have to address that. Anyway, that comes over here to this part of the tuning wheel. This is what, you, when you turn this, it comes up here and turns the gain capacitor or the tuning capacitor. Then the shaft comes out to here, to this part. It comes up through here, and these suffer the same problem goes in through this uh, the shaft comes in underneath here into that there's a little uh, pulley on the tuning dial so he comes in makes one wrap comes over here to an otter which is under here which was also it was some kind of a green plastic had long since rotted I had to make another one and it comes back out comes here so when you turn this it turns the kick capacitor here and then this shaft in turn turns the dial it does work. Looks looks kind of like a speedometer, doesn't it? Anyway, really nothing to it. Uh, let's see. What else I got here? Uh, these old little, basically it's a All-American 5. It just has low voltage tubes. This is a battery operated set. Let me turn this. What I like to do is when I'm not when I'm working on these things, I like to keep the plates closed on this in case I have an accident. You really don't want to bang one of these uh, plates on these capacitors here. Anyway, this is the oscillator section here. One is the antenna input, which is this one right here. This is what matches the, uh, the, uh, imp the front end of the RF stage to the antenna. So you adjust this control here for best reception on the high frequencies. Then you've got the oscillator and uh, da, 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 da. let me see oscillator has two tunes here I can't remember exactly what but this tunes the oscillator and, and first IF stage here so this is the first IF transformer here 455 kilohertz is the IF frequency intermediate frequency this is the second can and then this is the detector the output so we got an RF the uh, RF amplifier here, then we got the uh, mixer oscillator right here, uh, and then we've got the detector, or the second IF detector right here, which creates audio for the output tube, and then over here is the, uh, might be wrong about that, let me get the schematic. Let me get the schematic. So I'll be right about this stuff. Go Howard W. Sams. And I worked at the Zenith shop years ago. That's what we use all the time. Alright, let's make sure I get this right. So this tube right here is V1. V1 is a 1U4. They call it the RF amp. So yay, I'm 1 out of 5 so far. Alright, and then uh, V2 is this guy. So this is V1, which is the RF amp. Uh, it's a 1U4. This one here is that famous, world famous 1L6. That is called the converter. And that is the oscillator and IF uh, mixer. So it's oscillator mixer tube. I think that's kind of standard in AM sets. So this makes the uh, input signal stronger. This one here takes that input signal, mixes it with a frequency uh, a uh, I, uh, oscillator, uh, local oscillators they call it, and it creates a 
a uh, difference frequency and that difference frequency is called the IF applies it to this transformer here, it's an IF transformer uh, 455 kilocycles or kilohertz if you're from Yorba Linda alright, goes through this one right here so it comes in here, this is the antenna how much glare that is the antenna RF amplifier comes in here through this inner stage uh, this is the uh, input stage here there's that variable capacitor here it tunes this and it tunes this stage right here the uh, oscillator right here which uh, this is the oscillator coil this is where it does its mixing it oscillates and mix anyway uh, goes through this is the first IF can which is this and then it goes into the first IF amplifier which is V3 V3 is this tube all right, where the socket is, that's B3. Uh, the B3 is another 1U4, which is this guy. All right, goes into this IF transformer, uh, 455 kilocycles again, and goes into the detector tube, which is a 1S5, and the 1S5 is a V4, V4. So this is where the detector tube resides, right there. And once it comes through the detector, it finally goes out to V5, which is the 3V4. Um, audio output tube. So that audio output tube of course you know connects to the audio output transformer which in turn connects to the speaker. There you go. Nothing to it. Alright and finally let's see um, on the side of the radio if you're interested here's where that plug if you remember me telling you plugs into this switch here in other words it goes in through here you can see the slot right here there's a slot the other slot so when you plug that little plug in there it pushes the switch in if I can do it that changes it from AC mode to DC mode when you pull that little plug out it changes it back to AC mode so here are the little capacitors that I changed all I like to use uh, uh, polyester I believe they're called I'm, I'm sorry film caps this is my favorite kind right here two three four five six what have I got here one two three four five six seven uh, oh here's number seven I missed one when I ordered it so I just put this one here in it then of course the resistors that needed to be changed in here and there here's where uh, this resistor came from come with the output of the selenium rectifier which in my case it checks good so it takes the output of the selenium rectifier drops it down goes to the input of the uh, electrolytic capacitor stage and then goes through this stage here through this resistor here is uh, 68k goes into the second stage of the filtering goes elsewhere so anyway um, you know, not much to it all these little resistors and all this mess I had to go in and change, which is all fun. But anyway, uh, nothing to it. Let's see, the volume control right here, I had to clean it. I may have to clean it again, I don't remember. Uh, really nothing to it. Uh, let's see, I believe this to be the antenna coil. Which, uh, get the schematic again. Oop, that ain't schematic. That's the front of the schematic. Yeah, we're doing this camera gorilla style today. So, anyway, I believe this coil here is the antenna coil, which is this guy. Let me think about that. Yes, this is the antenna coil. So, the 1U4 is connected to this transformer. So, and then this transformer here, this is, uh, and then here's the oscillator. Uh, this is the tickle. It takes a little bit of that signal right here. It just kind of sticks it a little half loop right there. And it's coupled with this here loosely. So here's your loop right here connected to this coil. So that gives this uh, coil. I think this is a culprit's oscillator. So it gives it feedback to so it could regenerate itself. Anyway, the output of that tube goes into this, uh, where that transformer there winds up going over here to, I think it was this tube, goes into that transformer, comes out of that transformer to this tube, and from that tube it goes through the volume control to this tube. Anyway, that's that. 
I know it's kind of wham bam, thank you ma'am type explanation, but I don't see the point in getting really deep in theory. Who wants theory on Saturday morning? Uh, so yes, I changed all the filter caps. Uh, repaired the, the front. I think I told you how I did that. Uh, re, uh, let's see. I restrung this, if I remember right, yeah, this was, yeah, I was thinking I restrung it, but I'm thinking of another radio, I apologize. Anyway, uh, just uh, fixed the pulley in here, restrung this, restrung this, so all that works. It did track, but i got to go back and take this off, the cover back off, another reason I haven't glued it together yet. And once I get it right, then I can set the pointer where it needs to be and then do an alignment on it, which I don't think is going to be a big deal once I get a working components. Stuff the capacitor here, um, which is the hardest part was getting the uh, getting this uh, cardboard tube off of that capacitor without it damaging it. Then after I got all that stuff said and done, my line cords came in. I ordered these. Uh, don't remember from who. Um, waiting on the tubes. They should be in today. All but the one L6. I'm going to try it once the tubes come in. So that's done. Uh, the case, let's see, the case, that's my Tolex job, um, it had some runs, I think I, you're really supposed to use Tolex glue on this, a lot of people say, ah, oh, you can use uh, contact cement, what I did, but those feet I told you about, they go into here. I don't have any of these and I hadn't found any in town that I want to use. So I'm going to find me some of those. I think I'm just going to go to the hardware store and find some hinges that kind of look good. I don't see the point of getting anything fancy. Just get something that will work and looks decent and put on here. I took this plastic out right here, cleaned it up just like this, just like this front here. It was stained the same way, pitted. You still see that pit in there, which I don't understand. It looks like something chemical got a hold of it. I don't know. Anyway, I just took it off, scuffed it, repainted it. Matter of fact, it needed another coat because it's still shining through a little bit. But I really don't care. This radio, it's a, just a thousand times better. But this was broke off right here. It's supposed to be like that. This was broke off. You know, hey, it's got character, okay? This screen here was a gold color, kind of like this right here. Uh, I already had and it was still done and grungy washed off and all that and it didn't get rid of it just years of abuse so I just painted it gold I thought I had not gold but copper because that's all I had I like it so anyway um, I'm gonna get, I don't have a polishing wheel which I need I'm going to take this back off and put this on the polishing wheel see if I can get it shiny I think that will look good um, this is what it looks like See that color there? I just painted it gold. And on the inside, I masked this off. Once I got through with all the Tolex and everything, got this ready to go back together, before I put the Tolex on, I painted this. Okay, let's make me back up. But I wanted to keep this right here, the original stuff. So I just put a, I took some, you got to be careful with these paper labels. Um, if you stuck painter's tape on this, it will grab this and pull it off immediately. So I just take some painter's tape, throw it on my workbench, get it kind of gritty, so I just barely stick to that, just and you know cut it big enough to put over that. And I'd also do it to put a strip over this uh, model number here. So now, when I pull it off, it don't take the paper or the paint with it. And it just took some flat black, a little cheap dollar store flat black, and just kind of painted over it a little bit like that right there. Now right here, this is where I gotta find, this is where the tube complement label and all that stuff was, was at right here. That was in bad shape, so I just sanded it off and painted over it. I'm gonna try to find one one day. Um, that's really it. As far as that goes, this is the back. The back goes on like that right there. This, now this is fun. This actually goes into a uh, beveled recess in the back of this. Uh, I tore it, I messed it up trying to get this out. It was actually that this actually is upside down from how it was. This is how it originally was. Uh, the hole, was actually, this was actually here, but I tore it up trying to get it out. 
So I just plugged it up. I took a I took a wooden puck and cut a hole in this, glued it in here, and then I took and drilled, I think it was a seven eighths inch hole, and then I made a bevel and cut a bevel out like this was. That way when I got through Tolex and all this stuff, I was able to put this back in and then of course they had it rolled on the inside. I don't have tools like that. I just took put a puck underneath this side and put my hammer and started just lightly beating on it till I got this to flange out flare out and just hit it real solidly with a hammer till it's completely flattened out. And it worked great. I think it turned out good for my first job. And you can see these little ruins right here. That's what the contact cement did. So, but I think it turned out great. Now, this is called piping right here. These edges right here, this is called piping. Unfortunately, what I ordered, I ordered some piping from Antique, let's see, what was it? Antique Radio Supply. This is the piping. It was twice the thickness. I couldn't use this. This is for bigger stuff. I couldn't use this. Um, so I wound up, I just bit the bullet. Like I said, this radio's got character, so I just used, I didn't throw the piping away. So I just used the old piping. It, as you can see, it's worn. But hey, after this thing cures a little bit more, I think I'm going to go in there and find, find me some uh, something to treat this with, like some kind of leather treatment or something, and see if I can just maybe uh, give it a little bit of a treatment, but just, just to preserve it. And I guess that's about it, guys. Um, the tubes come in. Hopefully they'll work good enough because they were almost dead on my on my tester. Hopefully these tubes will make a big difference and I can go back in and get this thing tuned or I can pick up stations and get this thing back together. And also, this is the battery connector here. Um, I do intend on, once I get this thing working, uh, seeing if I can make a battery pack for this thing. Because that would be awesome to take this thing, take it to work or take it to work site or something like that or maybe somewhere and run it portable uh, like it was intended. I think that's going to be cool if I can make that work. So that'll be another video. So anyway, that's that guys. Um, I don't know of anything else. Um, just a quick little video because I didn't make a video of this restoration of this so I thought I'd at least sum it up on what I did. It's a cool little radio. Um, cool little radio. And that's, that thing's beeping at me for some reason. Or flashing red light at me. I don't know what that means. This looks like we're still recording and the battery's good so I guess maybe it's telling me that accessing a memory card. Um... That's that. I'm waiting on the epoxy to set on the plug, and I'll get that fixed later on today. Hopefully the tubes will be in shortly, and I'll play with that. But anyway, um, this will be a little short video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please hit the like button, and uh, you know, any comments would be fine. I, I appreciate it. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. And uh, peace, and God loves you. Bye.